Federal health officials warned this week businesses, hospitals, and communities across the country should prepare for a possible coronavirus outbreak. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say the immediate risk remains low, but its ongoing spread around the globe makes the virus harder to contain. We learn more about the concern and what precautions people should take from Michael Warby, an expert in epidemiology at the University of Arizona. This virus is related uh, not just to human uh, coronaviruses that cause the common cold, um, but also even more closely related to SARS, which people might remember from 2003, 2004. Uh, SARS had a 10% case fatality rate, which is just devastating. This virus ha has a case fatality rate, which is considerably lower than that. We still don't know exactly what it's going to be. Um, but it's probably considerably higher than flu. So if you think about flu killing 80,000 people in a year, uh, this is a really serious thing. And, and uh, as epidemiologists, we talk about something called the basic reproduction number of, of, a, of a virus. And that is, if your average person gets infected, how many people do they pass the virus on to? And this virus is, basic reproduction number looks to be more than two. So if you think about one person infected infects two people, each of those infects two people, uh, in not very long you have thousands and thousands of cases. Can multiply very quickly. Yeah. What can we do? Because many of us in the United States are sort of discounting it. It's not happening here in these mass numbers that it yeah. is in other places. So what are those simple steps we can take? Some of the things we can do uh, actually don't involve uh, this new uh, coronavirus it itself. So one of the things I would recommend is to get your flu shot. Again, we have something uh, available for a, a similar uh, respiratory virus that can protect people. Uh, and even if it doesn't uh, directly protect you from landing in the hospital, it may protect the next person uh, in, in line who might not get infected if you don't have as much virus in your body. So that's one thing that we can do. Another thing uh, is uh, to, to just think about who's going to be really hard hit uh, by this virus. And what we're seeing is it's hitting elderly people really quite hard. Um, and healthcare workers are always on the front line of, uh, of outbreaks like this. Uh, and so what, what we should be thinking about is preserving resources and making sure that healthcare workers have what they need. Uh, and, and, and so it's actually not a great thing to hoard things like face masks, which we don't even know uh, have a protective uh, effect. Um, but uh, I, it, it's this balance. It's a serious, serious thing. Um, one report says that this year's vaccine has been about 45% effective. Is that accurate? Uh, that is, uh, that's accurate, but it's really important to note that that effectiveness is measuring complete protection against infection. Uh, and, and so one way to look at it is glass half full. You're still protecting tens of thousands of people who get the vaccine, even if it's not 100% effective at blocking out infection. But at the same time, that vaccine, even if it doesn't completely block infection, in which case it would be uh, classified as ineffective in that patient, can still make the difference between getting really sick, uh, landing in the hospital with pneumonia and even dying, and just shaking it off uh, and, and going about your business after feeling a, a little ill for a couple days. Okay. Dr. Michael Warby, thank you. Thank you.